It's no secret that mining has been the best way to consistently make coins in Skyblock ever since the release of the Crystal Hollows. It also happens to be some of the hardest content to get into, partly due to how expensive everything is, and partly because there is a really long grind if you want to actually get to the point where mining is worth your time. I've included timestamps for this video so you don't have to watch through things that you've already been through. But, before you scroll to find your timestamp, make sure you use code HELCASTLE when buying stuff from the Hypixel shop, such as basic human rights or gems. It supports us immensely, and it gives you a cute little discount. Regardless of your current position in the game, this video will explain how to go from picking up your first ever pickaxe, all the way to maximizing how much profit, powder, and experience you can gain in the mining endgame. I mean, who doesn't want to spend all day staring at glass blocks? Early game mining is pretty standard, you mine gold for level 1, gold and iron for level 5, and then make your way down a bunch of mines in the deep caverns until you reach the bottom. Literally nothing interesting here. Craft a diamond pickaxe, give it the vanilla enchantments if you can afford to do that, and get mining. To get into the actual content, you're gonna need mining level 12, and you're gonna want 10 of any 3 different enchanted materials from the mine. It's easiest to get this with lapis, redstone, and coal, but it honestly doesn't matter much. It won't take that long no matter what you do. Talk to Reese once you've done this, and then you can get to the real mining content. Now you're in the Dwarven Mines, and this is truly revolutionary stuff if you still live in January 2021. If you have a walk around, you'll notice there is these huge veins of mithril ore. It looks like prismarine if you aren't using a texture pack, but it also takes forever to mine. If you take your time to mine enough of it, Eventually, a white block pops out, and this is titanium, and you can't mine it with a diamond pickaxe, you're gonna need something better. In Skyblock, every mining item has a breaking power, and every block has a block strength. You can only break blocks equal or below the breaking power of your pickaxe, and if you can't break a block, it'll tell you so in chat. Luckily, a 5 power pickaxe can be bought for 10,000 coins from Boo Boo in the Dwarven Mines shop, and it's a little faster than a diamond pickaxe too. There is a few more pickaxes you can buy as upgrades later on here as well. You'll need all this to level up your heart of the mountain. This is a skill tree you can access anytime in your stablock menu or by typing slash HOTM. Right now, you're level 1, and only have one token of the mountain, which you can use to unlock one perk, starting from all the way at the bottom. This perk gives you mining speed, and can be upgraded by spending increasing amounts of mithril powder, another thing I have to explain. Mithril powder is a sort of currency you get from mining mithril blocks, and it's used entirely to buy upgrades in the heart of the mountain. There are a few other ways to get powder, including a daily bonus of 1000 from completing Fetcher's daily quest and this puzzle room, and also a few more ways I'll talk about later. To level up your heart of the mountain, you're going to need heart of the mountain XP, and you get this from doing commissions from the king. I'm pretty sure the game directs you to this through the tutorial, but if you talk to one of the kings in the throne room, you get two small quests to do, and completing these quests gives you a hundred of the mountain XP each, but you also get 900 extra bonus from your first four commissions every day. You need 3000 XP to reach level 2, so that really means you only have to do three commissions. Level 2 will grant you access to the forge, a sort of advanced crafting system where you can craft items with an added wait time because we hate Iron Man players apparently. This will be the place you come to to create better pickaxes and a few other things in the future, but I generally won't touch on it in this video because it's pretty obvious in what it does. Completing commissions also awards milestone rewards, most of which unlock emissaries, em em emissaries which are NPCs you can go to in order to complete commissions faster than running to the king every time. You also gain more XP from commissions from leveling up. You gain 200 per commission now, and when you reach level 3 onwards, you'll gain 400 XP per commission. The last level I'm really gonna talk about is level 3, because there you have enough tokens to unlock a pickaxe ability. The mining speed boost ability is honestly the only one worth getting, except for some very specific scenarios, so you may as well stick with that. By level 3, you also unlock the Crystal Hollows, which is the endgame mining area, and although you can technically go there right now, 
I'd say there isn't really much of value to do there until you reach Heart of the Mountain level 5 and get a load of better gear than what you have currently. Especially because most ores there have a block strength of 6, 7 or 8. A later section of this video, we'll talk about the Crystal Hollows. Getting to that point takes a total of 37,000 Heart of the Mountain XP or about 107 commissions if you're doing this all on one day. Specking heavily into the efficient miner perk once you reach level 4 will massively increase how fast you can do commissions, and you can also get small amounts of XP from random events that happen every 20 minutes or so, which are always worth participating in whenever they happen. Generally speaking though, the Dwarven Mines is pretty simple and is more of a speed bump before reaching the Crystal Hollows. As for the gear you can use, aside from the obvious pickaxe progression, there's two armor sets. The Goblin Armor set converts your mana into mining speed and can be obtained from killing goblins, and the Glacite Armor set is a better set which can be obtained from killing Ice Walkers, but both of these armor sets are available really cheaply on the auction house if you have access to it. There is a third armor set, the Sorrow Armor, but obtaining it requires killing these weird enemies under the bridge which have really high health and damage. It's really expensive too, and I'd personally consider it to come later in the progression, so maybe don't worry about it too much. But if you have the coins, the armor set has literally no skill requirement and is basically the second best mining armor in the game. The last thing you're going to need is a titanium pickaxe of any kind. Doesn't have to be the best one, you're just going to need one for the breaking power 6, but it will help to have the polished titanium pickaxe. So now, we can look towards going into the crystal hollows. If you've just skipped here, make sure you have Heart of the Mountain 4 and at least a titanium pickaxe, or else you're kinda wasting your time here in my opinion. The Crystal Hollows is a totally different island to the rest of the game in that you can literally break everything. The environment is fully destructible and the walls are made of hard stone, and the whole island is somewhat randomly generated and different every lobby. However, some things are consistent between lobbies. For example, the shape of the tunnels and ore spawning locations are exactly the same in all the lobbies, and all lobbies have four biomes which also spawn in the same locations, and the center of every lobby contains a structure called the Crystal Nucleus. The Crystal Nucleus contains a sort of passage to get to any of the four other biomes, and also an emissary you can use to complete commissions. The commissions you receive in the Crystal Hollows are totally different to the ones from the Dwarven Mines, but award the same amount of XP. If you take a walk around the area, you'll notice that sometimes there is random structures that spawn, and everywhere in the walls there are gemstone crystals that require a breaking power of 7, with the exception of red rubies which only need a power of 6. There are also chests in these structures which reward you with various drops like gemstones and gemstone powder, though you won't have a use for the gemstone powder just yet. If you wanna get started here, you're gonna need two things. First, some way to get a breaking power 7 tool so you can actually mine most of the gemstones, and second, some way to get 1500 mining speed so you can instantly break hardstone to quickly make tunnels to wherever you wanna go. The two ways to get a breaking power 7 are either crafting a titanium drill, which costs like 40 million coins of materials and takes like a week of forge time for everything, or the significantly cheaper and arguably better ruby drill which only needs a day, a fuel tank, drill engine and 6 fine ruby gemstones. If you really hate the idea of forging a drill, you can also go out of your way to get a Picronombus 2000. This is a pickaxe with 7 breaking power and 1500 mining speed, but with the drawback of only having 5000 durability. You can get them extremely rarely in treasure chests, but the chance is so low it's not really worth grinding for. They are, however, a very common drop from the crystal nucleus, and you are very likely to drop one after 2 or 3 runs, and are definitely worth trying to get, even if doing runs will be very slow right now. If you want to learn how to do that, there's a timestamp on screen now. Oh, and if you aren't on Iron Man, most players sell their Picronombus for 200 to 300,000 coins, which makes it a bit of a no-brainer for both mining gemstones and hearthstone. You may also have noticed that gemstones work a little different to most ores. Instead of just having an enchanted version, they have 5 tiers. When you mine a gemstone, you get a rough version. 80 rough ones craft into a flawed gemstone. 80 of flawed gemstones to make a fine gemstone, and then 80 more of those to make a flawless gemstone. 
That means if you want 6 fine rubies, you're gonna need 480 flawed rubies, or about 40,000 rough rubies. Better get working on that mining speed and mining fortune perk. Once you have that drill, you'll see it has a fuel stat as well as slots to add upgrades, but let's not worry about upgrades right now because they are ridiculously expensive for no good reason. If your fuel is running out, you can refill it at the drill technician in either the dwarven mines or the crystal nucleus by using anything from goblin eggs to various fuel items you can find in the mines or just bought from Boo Boo. You can also use your drill to collect 12 fine sapphires, jades, amethyst, and embers to forge 3 gemstone mixtures, and then use that to further upgrade your drill to mine a little faster and have a higher breaking power that we'll need later. A good cheap pet that may be of use here is the bee pet. There's not really many pets that help with mining, but a rare or above bee pet is the only pet that gives mining fortune or mining buffs at all that isn't extremely expensive or hard to get. If you want mining speed for hearthstone, don't use your drill. It's gonna waste fuel, and it's also literally slower than your pickaxe. Make sure your pickaxe has a reforge that grants mining speed, as well as the efficiency enchantment, and keep working on your heart of the mountain. You can also apply some cheap gemstone upgrades to your glashite or goblin armor. Four fine ambers will give you a whole 112 more mining speed, which goes a long way. You'll get there eventually, and when you do, you can start thinking about the crystal nucleus. There's more to the crystal nucleus than just being a passageway between areas. There are five slots for placing crystals that you have to go out and find in the five main areas of the crystal hollows. Each of these areas has a structure that spawns in a completely different place within its quadrant in every lobby. So, it's never the same, and you have to find them each time you go to a new lobby. I recommend using a mod like Skytales, which adds a minimap of the Crystal Hollows so you can easily make your way back to structures once they are found. You don't have to be totally in the dark when looking for structures though. You can find wishing compasses in loot chests, which point you in the direction of the structure you need to go to next in whichever area you're in. If you have a mod like Not Enough Updates, they can triangulate the exact location of the structure with two compasses and then create a waypoint for you to walk towards. Each of the five crystals have some sort of mini quest within their respective structures. The Amethyst Crystal requires a jungle key, which can be obtained by killing two guardians that spawn in random structures, or purchased for a hundred sludge juice from an NPC. The compass will point you towards this NPC if you don't have a key yet, and once you do have a key, the compass will point you towards a temple, which contains a short parkour section, rewarding the crystal when complete. The Sapphire Crystal is found in the Lost Precursor City. Talk to this guy in the corner of the structure, and he'll ask you for one of each automaton part. These are fairly common drops from the automata that spawn all around the city and area, as well as being a 1.5% drop from treasure chests in the Precursor Ruins, and there are 6 of them in total. Giving these to Professor Robot will open the door and award you the crystal. The Amber Crystal requires you to set things straight in a messy divorce. You first talk to the Goblin King and feed him 3 Goblin Eggs of any color to get a smell status effect, and then use that to walk past the guards, which are literally just giant buildings, in a separate structure called the Goblin Queen's Den. The compass will point you to these two structures in the order you need, but note that you will lose the smell effect if you touch water at any point. The Jade Crystal requires you to use a metal detector to find 4 lost tools in a massive pile of gold. If you use a mod like Not Enough Updates, it can solve the location of each treasure chest pretty quickly for you, and you can get the metal detector anytime by just walking to one of the NPCs. Return all four tools, and the crystal is yours. The last crystal is the Topaz Crystal, which takes you down to the magma fields. Within the structure is a boss named Bell, and you can collect its crystals by defeating it. It has no health, and instead will die after taking 200 hits from anything. Funnily enough, the game doesn't check for whether or not Bell is dead, but rather if it's not alive, which means you can actually just grab the crystal for free if the boss hasn't spawned yet. Once you have all five, take them to the nucleus and place them in their rightful place, and you'll get 28 items dropped at the front. In these items include one of each fine gemstone in the game, and then 20 random drops which range from gemstones to a temporary strong pickaxe to reforged stones to the elusive Devon's alloy used to make the best drill in the game, which is really expensive. Each run also rewards you with 800 heart of the mountain XP. The last easy gear upgrade comes in the form of armor. 
If you already have sorrow armor, you can totally ignore this part. But if you're on a budget, I'd say the best armor you can go for at this stage of the game is the Yog armor. You need Hearthstone Collection 5 to get it, but it's a relatively cheap option, and although you need to grind Yogs to gain stats, in the end, you get 500 mining speed, which is even more than the best mining set in the game gives you. What makes this armor and Sorrow armor strong in particular is this, the Universal Gem slot. Whilst having mining speed and mining fortune is great, there is actually one stat better than both, and that stat is Pristine which can be gotten from applying topaz gemstones to items, but you can only do this to items that have a universal or topaz gemstone slot. What one pristine does is provide a 1% chance to upgrade a mined rough gemstone into a flawless gemstone, essentially multiplying the number of gemstones mined by 80, and this stats with mining fortune too. So, when you get one pristine stat, you're actually getting a plus 80% multiplier on your mining fortune, so, if you can apply even just 4 relatively cheap fine topaz gemstones onto a set of yard armor, you're going to have 4.8 pristine, or about 4 times multiplier on your mining fortune, which is objectively going to be better than the mining fortune you lose by changing to an armor set that has no intrinsic mining fortune. Just note that once you have pristine, you should disable your efficient miner perk as gemstones mined by efficient miner are not affected by pristine. And, if you need to mine the topaz yourself because you're on Iron Man, you'll need the breaking power 8 of the gemstone drill. After that, upgrades to your items are actually pretty hard to get, because they're extremely expensive and time-consuming to create in comparison to the starter items. The next worthwhile upgrade from a gemstone drill is a gemstone gauntlet, which requires Heart of the Mountain 6, but has a really good mining speed, and most importantly, a slot for a topaz gemstone to give pristine. After the gauntlet, the only good upgrades are the X655 Titanium Drill and the Devon's Drill. Everything below that doesn't have pristine slots and so isn't worth using at all. Sorrow Armor is much cheaper than any drill upgrades and just as impactful in terms of stats too. Before any of that though, Heart of the Mountain 5, 6 and 7 are super worth grinding for because of the mining speed and mining fortune 2 perks at the very top of the skill tree. Getting there by doing normal commissions sounds pretty hellish because you need a combined total of 250,000 XP to get there. Instead, you can do this really really quickly by doing nucleus runs in a really efficient way. Nucleus runs are not only great source of Heart of the Mountain XP, but every run is pretty much guaranteed to be a profitable one. If your Heart of the Mountain is maxed out, then you'll get a bunch of gemstone powder instead, and it's a lot of RNG, so, you know, fun. Although it seems as simple as just running around and getting all crystals, you can actually do quite a lot to optimize the amount of time it takes to finish one of these to the point where it only takes about 3 minutes or so to complete one run, which is way faster than you could ever do it normally, and all of this comes down to preparation. The first thing you gotta do is figure out how many runs you want to do, and then create a bizarre buy order for that many of each automaton part. If you're on Iron Man, grind this many all at once instead. Trust me, it's way faster to do this all in one go than it is to keep doing this every time you need the sapphire crystal. Whilst you wait for the order to fill, find a mines of divan and get however many sets of scavenged items you need. You can only get a particular item to drop if it's not in your inventory though, so you need to put each of the set of tools into your storage when you find them. Then, you need to find a good lobby. Occasionally, lobbies can bug and spawn without a structure, so you need to make sure you have them all in a lobby. Even better are lobbies where the structures are very close to the spawn tunnels and where Kizad's dump spawns deep underground so you can dig down in a straight line to it. Once you've found an ideal lobby, you want to start preparing it. In simple terms, you're building a tunnel between all of the structures, but that's honestly pretty boring. Although it is fine to do that, it's way easier if you grab a couple bob ohms and just blast a huge tunnel from each nucleus exit to your structures and you'll get a really easy to find path. If you're trying to grind Heart of the Mountain XP, it is really important that all of these paths come directly from the nucleus and to the structures. 
This is because once you've unlocked your fourth commission slot, you'll always have a commission to obtain one of the five gemstones, worth 400 XP, meaning you get 2000 XP for collecting all of the gemstones along the way, as long as you come back to the nucleus and talk to the emissary between crystals. You also get the 800 XP from finishing it, so that's 2800 in total. If you can do one of these every 3 or 4 minutes, that's like 42,000 heart of the mountain XP an hour, and it's even worth doing this if you're max level, because each run will instead give you 3200 gemstone powder. If you don't care about either of those though, you can instead try to dig a direct route between all 4 crystals if they are close enough together, and follow that in a loop. Extra speed can also be had from owning a royal pigeon or the slash warp nucleus travel scroll too, but you'll probably already be near max by the time you get these. For further optimization, make sure you're grabbing the topaz crystal before ball spawns so you don't have to fight it, and keep an eye on your goblin king effect. It lasts for 20 minutes and you can totally skip going to the king as long as you have it. Sometimes, you'll even be lucky enough to find a lobby where someone is doing the exact same thing and make use of their tunnels, but whilst digging, just remember that ores and gemstones regenerate over time, so you want to go around them if you're digging out any permanent tunnels. Nucleus runs are great for XP and if you're matched, they're pretty good for gemstone powder too. But what if you wanted even more powder? Most perks in the heart of the mountain need millions of powder to max out, and you really aren't going to get that from just mining gemstones. Powder grinding is an essential part of the Heart of the Mountain that you can do starting at Heart of the Mountain level 6. Whenever you mine a hard stone block, there is a 0.2% chance for a treasure chest to appear out of it, and this treasure chest has a very high chance of containing anywhere from 80 to 4800 gemstone and mithril powder. Double during a double powder event, you can massively increase these yields with 3 perks. Mole, which breaks up to 10 adjacent blocks of hearthstone, which is basically 10 more chances of spawning a treasure chest, especially with Hypixel's interesting definition of adjacent. Great Explorer, which increased the chance to find treasure chests from 20% to 96%, as well as reducing the number of locks you need to pick by between 1 and just completely removing the locks entirely. And this is obviously a really, really good perk. The numbers are also labeled totally wrong too, as increasing by 4% actually means adding 0.04% to the chance to find a chest for some reason meaning a matched perk actually increases your chance from 0.2% to 1.16% or a 480% increase. No idea why it works like this, but the perk is just way better than advertised. The last ability is Powder Buff, unlocked at Heart of the Mountain 7, which I think really speaks for itself. When you decide you want to powder mine, it's worth resetting your heart of the mountain and putting all of your gemstone powder into those three perks, as literally nothing else is going to help you out there. It's also worth noting that the mining spread granted by the Vein Seeker ability is fairly useless, as mining blocks horizontally caps at 9 mining spread anyway, so it's just kinda not worth using it unless you aren't maxed out on the mole perk. Mining speed boost is also kinda useless, so for once, I'd say it's the best to have Petrobolus ability to just throw your pickaxe at gemstone veins, as the small amount of powder you get from each time you do this will slowly add up. The efficient miner perk is also probably the best use of your mithril powder, as large ore veins like coal or iron will block the direction you are mining, and you really want to try and clear them out quickly to get on with the treasure chests. It's also worth having a gemstone drill of some kind to hold whilst you open chests, as these drills have between 5-20% to bonus powder gain whilst holding them. For an easy rule, Great Explorer 15 should be an absolute priority if you can't afford level 20, as a single lock is not much slower than 0 locks, but is significantly faster than 2 locks on chests. Gradually upgrading the powder buff and mole perk is good too, but Great Explorer is your absolute priority. You also don't get the benefit of more than 8 mining spread, meaning you don't have to go above level 101 on mole if you have a scatha pet, or level 141 otherwise. The only pet that really helps with this too is the scatha pet, which gives you a massively increased chance to find treasure chests, as well as some extra mining spread if you aren't matched on that. However, the pet is genuinely ridiculously expensive and hard to get for literally no reason. So, if you cannot afford it, then you just can use whatever pet you want to level up. Once you have all the items you need, 
just start digging out the big area of hearthstone for hours on end and collecting the chests. It's also ever so slightly more efficient to grind for powder in the precursor ruins because this area has no common chest drops and such a slightly higher chance for powder, but the difference is minimal. That's all there is to it, but it's pretty low intensity, so you can do it whilst watching a playlist of our other videos or something. The main reason you are here is probably to learn how to actually make a load of coins from this, and it's honestly easier than you think. However, it's not something that everyone can do because you need to have a lot of stats. I would highly suggest that you do not try the following techniques unless you have a good 1200 mining fortune and at least 10 pristine. Doesn't matter how you get these stats, but this is what you're gonna need. If you don't have those stats, you pretty much just need better gear or maybe more gemstone powder, and if you need coins, your time would be better spent running the crystal nucleus instead. The first method, the easiest method, involves mining one of the four main gemstones. At the time of recording, Amethyst gemstones are worth the most on the bazaar, but this could totally change at any time and you should check with gemstones you really want to mine before starting. Also, make sure you have the mining speed boost ability, and most importantly, disable the efficient miner perk. If this perk activates, Pristine will not activate on any blocks broken by the perk, which means you are losing a lot of gemstones. Then, you need to prepare a mining area. The best way to do this is either a high level mall perk, or even better, a whole bunch of bob arms can be used to clear an area ready for mining. Although the bombs will initially destroy the gemstones, they will regrow after about 5 to 10 minutes and continue to regrow afterwards. Once they have regrown, build a little platform underneath all of the gemstones so you have somewhere to stand. Then, you just want to hop between these floating crystal chunks and mine them. The best path for doing this is absolutely the armadillo pet in my opinion. Although a recent nerf fixed all the crazy efficient exploits, using the pet for its intended purpose is actually still really strong. Whenever you ride the armadillo pet, it will instantly break any blocks around it as if it were using your held item. This means pristine and everything works whilst insta-mining crystals with its energy bar. A legendary armadillo pet has 300 energy regenerates 0.33 of its max energy per second, and can mine each gemstone block with 1.5 energy. Essentially, this pet will allow you to insta-mine 200 blocks every 5 minutes, which pretty much just makes it a second pickaxe ability. Just make sure to build your platforms underneath the crystals out of cobblestone, because your armadillo will break most of other blocks you could be using. Another popular method is ruby mining, which requires you to have a ball pet to survive the heat. Although rubies spawn everywhere, they spawn especially often in certain areas at the bottom of the magma fields. The ball pet also increases all of your stats, including mining stats, by 15%, and rubies are also about 30% faster to mine than the usual gemstone, which all contributes to a much larger yield than any other gemstone, at the cost of probably having to NPC sell everything. The setup for this is exactly the same as other gemstone mining I just described, but without the option of using the armadillo pet, which is honestly a pretty fair trade-off. Structure mining is yet another popular method used to mine gemstones, usually in the precursor city or mines of Devan, that just involves mining the huge crystals that spawn within these structures. There is no real technique to this, but the strategy pays off, because there's almost no downtime moving between crystals, and the crystals are so big that you can pretty much do most of it with one hand. The trade-off here is that naturally generated gemstones cannot be mined with an armadillo pet, so you lose that efficiency in exchange for a more consistent time mining. The final method is by far the cheesiest one, but also arguably the most effective. In the precursor ruins, there are various random structures that can rarely spawn that also happen to contain huge gemstones. You wouldn't think of them as anything special unless someone pointed it out, but a lot of these gemstones don't actually have the armadillo protection, or at least not fully. This means that you pretty much get all of the benefits of structure mining with none of the drawbacks. There are a bunch of optimizations you can do here, including following routes, which are essentially just areas with a bunch of really good gemstones all in a small area, or gemstones close to the magma fields so that they can be mined with the ball pet. But that's something you can look at other videos for if you want some more hyper-optimized and high level. This video pretty much just details something that anybody can do.
I tested the four mining methods with my pretty mediocre stats to see what's better, using the same perks level and gear for each test, only changing my pet depending on what I was doing. Overall, I found that mining glitched structures with an armadillo pet was by far the most effective strategy for me, making 21.1 million coins per hour from bazaar selling sapphires or 14.4 million from NPC selling them. The only real downside is that you have to spend time finding a lobby with one of these structures and hope that isn't been patched by then. Normal mining one of the gemstones with an armadillo, in my case amethyst, because that was the most valuable at the time, was the second most effective strategy, generating 80 million coins per hour from the bazaar or 11.5 million per hour from NPC selling. Ruby mining with the ball pet generated 13.8 million coins per hour from both bazaar and NPC selling, because the prices are currently the same. If you're on Iron Man, this is the second best method for coins, as it does give you more gemstones than you do mining other gemstones. The worst strategy was Jade mining in the mines of Devan, which only made 12.6 million coins per hour from the bazaar or 10.3 million from NPC selling. It's honestly pretty overrated. I can't recommend it unless you're super lazy. One last thing to note is that methods involving armadillos are better for people with lower stats because the difference in speed between insta mining and normal breaking is much higher when your mining speed is low. Inversely, ruby mining gets exponentially better as stats increase as the ball pet applies its 15% multiplier to every single one of your stats, meaning it will probably edge out the other methods as you get into match stats territory. There's a couple more things that didn't really fit in this video, so I'll just include them at the end. The only equipment to provide any kind of mining buff whatsoever is the Ancient Cloak and the Gemstone Gauntlets. Everything else, you can just use your highest rarity equipment with the Glistening Reforge. Armor of Divan is by far the best mining set, but is also extremely expensive, being forged from gemstone mixtures and Divan fragments earned from the Crystal Hollows. However, it's actually a significantly worse set than Sorrow Armor at base, just because it doesn't have any gemstone slots. Its 5 gemstone slots all need to be unlocked with gemstone chambers, and each of these has a really expensive forge recipe. Therefore, the set is more expensive than it seems and isn't really worth getting unless you can really commit to buying it. Mining speed works a little weirdly, in that as you approach high values of mining speed, they may actually provide no benefit due to how Minecraft server ticks work. You need to reach a new threshold of mining speed to actually mine blocks any faster, and I've included the tick breaking thresholds on screen now, so you can try to not waste the powder and money on mining speed where it may not have any impact. Another consequence of this is that your ping actually matters. There is a delay between a block finishing being broken and the block actually breaking for you, and this time is affected by ping. This means that if your ping is higher, you're actually going to mine slower because you have your own ping added on top of the breaking time of any gemstones you mine. And this is especially noticeable if you want to mine blocks behind other blocks. You can kinda counteract this effect by timing moving your mouse onto a new block after the expected number of ticks pass and there is a rhythm to it. But this can do more harm than good if you're bad at timing it. And sometimes, you just have to accept that North Americans have an advantage in gemstone mining that you cannot make up for. Finally, worms and scatha are a really strange feature. They're the only way to get the Scatha pet as a very rare drop. But don't drop the worm membrane you need to craft gemstone chambers because that comes from sea creatures for some reason. It's also not entirely clear how to spawn a worm. Officially, they spawn when mining in tunnels. But the definition of a tunnel is really unclear. I've had the most luck getting them to spawn when mining along the edges of the world and in specifically 1x2 sized tunnels. There is also a 30 second period after one spawning where another cannot spawn, and only a quarter of these are even Scatha, which have the chance to drop a pet. If you really need to grind for these, I suggest disabling your mole perk and digging one by two tunnels at the bottom of the world, but I've also been personally able to mine along the edges with the mole perk and get some good success. In every lobby, a structure known as the Fairy Grotto will spawn somewhere, and it's the only place where you can get Jasper gemstones. Jasper itself has a hardness of 9, which means there's not a lot that will break it, and it takes quite a long time. You can also get 2 fairy souls from fishing here, with a 1 out of 200 chance. There's no consistent way to locate the structure, so it's all just pure luck. 
Ugh, wow, who would have thought mining could be so complicated? I've probably missed a fair few little things that people could find useful, so if you have your own tips or think I've missed something, please leave a comment, and if it's important enough, I'll pin it. Alright, that's basically all of it. Have fun mining. See ya, and have a nice day.